Welcome home to Peace, Love, and Soup. The Burning Man edition. Bringing you significant soups. This one made on the playa. Along with culture. All things Burning Man. Cooking. In the deep, dark desert. And conversation. That changes the lives of all who attend. Soul-warming audio nourishment. For the heart and mind. With Cherry Poppins' Joseph Patrick Delaney here. And Dr. Top Hat San Marejo Fashe Drake. <laughs> could we have any more nicknames? I think we could. Probably by next year we'll have a couple more each. Set your life on fire. Seek those who fan your flames. Rumi. We are so excited to invite you in for a little glimpse of our Burning Man experience. It seems like a lifetime ago. It really does. We'll be celebrating creativity in all its forms, from art to architecture, transportation to transformation, and unique ways of building community through gifting and radical self-expression at Burning Man. It would be impossible to explain it all, but with the help of our friend, campmate, and professional tour guide in the default world, Ra Ra, we'll be guiding you on a journey guaranteed to be both educational and entertaining. You'll hear from a variety of burners coming together from around the globe, sharing their personal connections of what the playa provided them. As always, there'll be generously gifted music. This episode features polka madre. Pack all things. Get on that dusty road of life. Share bonfires at night. With old friends and new. And a saxophone kazoo. Now serving Playa Playa Soup. Soup. Hello, everyone. All right. All right. I love Burning Man. It's one of my favorite things in the whole world. Well, Robert, we have so much ground to cover. You brought me to Burning Man, what is it, like a decade ago. Yes, indeed. And then, Cherry, you brought me. That's true. Well, super. So we're going to take a little tour of Burning Man here. There are 10 principles which serve as guidelines. And they're really essential for the functioning of an inclusive and participatory society. It's what makes Burning Man work. One is radical inclusion. Everyone, no exceptions. The gifting society. It's not barter. But if you have a gift and you want to freely give it to someone, go for it. Maybe you made an extra grilled cheese sandwich at midnight or maybe you're a masseuse. But it's not a trade system. A lot of people get that mixed up. Another of the principles is decommodification, radical self-reliance. Radical self-expression, communal effort, civic responsibility, contribute, volunteer, leave no trace. It's the largest leave no trace event in the world. We spend hours picking up little pieces of things after every camp, and I'm really proud of how clean we leave every year. Participation and immediacy. Those are the 10 principles that guide this amazing experience. How do you get tickets for Burning Man? There are several rounds of ticket distribution, and the first is to enter the lottery and try your luck. You can just go online to burningman.org in February or March. Yes, indeed. Yeah. If you don't get that round, try again. Mm-hmm. But it is possible later in the year on Craigslist things, make sure you get legitimate tickets. But almost everyone who wants to does have a chance to get into the event. And then how do we get to Black Rock City when we have all these people trying to get there? It is a little crazy. You want to have a plan and then have a backup plan and another (laughs) backup plan. But part of the planning is the fun and the excitement and the buildup to the event. And people do spend hours figuring it out. Mm -hmm. You can carpool with your friends. You can take a burner bus, which is a large organized carpool system from the airport right to the desert. And when you get to the event, you get to bypass the car line. So that's a fantastic way. If you have endless funds, there are some people who fly in. You cannot walk to the event, however. Can't you skydive into Burning Man? (gasps) You can, but they get fierce winds and these twisters. And so you really have to know what you're doing. I skydive. I've done 122 jumps and it's one of my dreams. I would love, 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 love to skydive into Burning Man. And there are people who gift rides of a flight over Burning Man. I believe you can even do that and join the Mile High Club. What? What? (laughs) Well, this year, I had a concert on Saturday night. Cherry came up with me. And as soon as that concert was over, we got right in the car. We'd already loaded up all of our gear that afternoon. And we drove throughout the night. 
And then we got to you early in the morning in Reno, picked you up. a nice last shower. Yes, we did. We drove from Reno to Black Rock City, and it's about two hours. Is that right, tour guide Rara? If there were no traffic, that would be correct. Okay. And it's so lovely to drive into Burning Man with people. You come to a gate and they greet everybody. But if the conditions are really bad, they shut down that gate because they don't want people driving in whiteout conditions where they can't see. And that's what happened to us. We just like blowing right in and then <laughs> full stop, dust storm, full whiteout. We just had to sit in line for a few hours. People <laughs> dance and they meet your neighbors. Each time we go to Burning Man, it's, it's a different entry experience. You go through that gate and you get welcome home by whomever is greeting you. It's just such a loving warmth. And all the time that it took to get there it just washes away and you really do feel like you're coming home to your home you've chosen. I feel the same way. From the moment I enter the gate and get my first hug, I can't stop smiling. You could feel yourself just let go all of a sudden. <sighs> And it was a very nice, light feeling. Yes. Agreed. So now we're going to talk to our neighbors this year. That were volunteer greeters at the gate. Let's hear their firsthand account of what that experience was like. My name is Pupfish. I'm Sparkly Nipples. Welcome home. Most people were just stoked their first time or their 19th time. Even after they've been in line for so long, they'll want a long hug. We probably hugged hundreds of people. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. And then everybody gets a book. With a map. To show where the art is. The book has what, where, and when of everything at Burning Man. It includes classes, dancing, a roller disco. You wouldn't even believe. For someone who has been there for... Many years, they might want a quick hug and their book, anything else. And they're like, nope, I'm good. Thanks for being out here. Have an awesome burn. But when somebody is with a new person. A virgin. Someone first time coming to Burning Man, basically. They will get their phone out and film the whole virgin ring the bell ritual. They start chanting, roll in the dust, roll in the dust. It's encouraged because you're never going to be as clean as you are coming in, so you might as well just embrace it. So basically, they can ring the bell how many times they want. They can roll in the dust. They cannot. It's up to them. It's their burn. That freedom takes them out of the default world. A lot of people love seeing all the lights at night or get tons of joy from the technology. What brings me back to Burning Man, it's the people the people that I've met over the years, the stories they have, how far they come, it's pretty amazing. So the whole point of Burning Man is to be part of it. You know, I think that's what brought me to greeting, just to give back. Yay. I love Burning Man. Cool. You guys, thank you so much for being with us today. Yes. Thank you for participating. Thank, thank you. you. You guys were awesome. Take me by my clammy little hands and walk me to the road. Take me to the place that I love. So we get through the gate. It's, what, 11 o'clock at night? And we're like, oh, God, we still have to set up our camp. Where are we going to camp? We didn't really have a place set. And we kind of meandered through the neighborhood. And then out of nowhere, this wonderful woman came up to us and said, camp here, camp here. And we said, this is it. And one thing we were considering as we were picking our camp space is if you want a quieter living environment, you have to go further away from the main <laughs> art playa. But you also then have to bike further at night to see any of the art, to get to the man, to get to the temple, etc. Maybe it correlates with age. The older you get, the further <laughs> out you go. But, oh, my gosh, we were about halfway out, and it was wonderful. I because agree. you can always, always find something going on. It's great to know that you could come in and have all sorts of different options for camping. You could come in in an RV. You could come in basically off of the bus with just a backpack and go to a walk-in site and set up your tent. Uh, you could come in and have a theme camp that you're already part of where everything's structured and organized. Or you can do like we did. Uh, Rabra, will you explain how the layout is of the city? So basically, it's a giant clock, and if you think of the man as the centerpiece, we have street signs laid out by the BLM crews and volunteers, 
And so they radiate out in concentric circles with letters, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And the theme of the year determines the name of the street. And then they have intersecting streets that follow the clock, 334, 435. So perhaps you're at B and 7 o'clock. That way you can give people your address. So most of the people live in the bottom half of the clock, and then the top half of the clock are where all the art installations. Amazing. Um, but, I mean, hundreds of art installations. Right in that whole center section where the hands originate and further up, like, 11 to 2, that's all open playa, just ready that to is. explore. And you can ride your bike or take an art car freely in that area. Just absolutely wonderful to see what you come across, and that space allows for you to have that sense of discovery. So basically, if you know the alphabet and how to tell time, you can never get lost in Burning Man, regardless of how inebriated you are. Is that correct? (laughs) That sums it up beautifully. (laughs) So we found our camp at night. We set up and we wake up in the morning and we start to meet our neighbors. And the first neighbor we meet was Ty Panda from Colorado. And he had the coolest structure. Well, maybe we should just let him describe it. Let's hear from him. Thank you so much. So this is Ty Panda here. I've been to two Burning Mans now and spent quite a while geeking out in the garage to try and figure out how to build the perfect structure for Burning Man. How can I make this stand up to 80 mile an hour wind and live in for nine or 10 days? People the first year called it the toaster with the slanted walls and the silver insulation panels that I used. So the toaster was about five by eight and about six feet so that I could be standing in this thing the whole time without having to lean over. The outside is constructed of RMAX insulation panels. The material itself is highly reflective to reflect heat. So I used about six of those, cutting them so they could all fold up to fit inside my car for transporting it. Independently, these panels can be very weak, but once they are put together with twisty bolts to the wood ribs frame, you know, totally bomb proof out there. And then I actually ratchet the whole toaster down into the playa uh, with climbing webbing, just in case we got one of those 80 mile an hour gusts, so the thing's not going anywhere. And then I also added a solar panel outside for running the fan, lighting, and charging all 50 blinky lights that I attached to myself for the nighttime, because it's crazy dangerous out there if you're not lit. And then, you know, there's this modern reality of charging cell phones and cameras and my speaker. I must have music in there. You know, it's fun. I really enjoy this. Is it perfect? Absolutely not. But Uh, Nothing is ever perfect. I'm such a tinkerer. I'm sure that I'm going to add more something the next time I go, but the basic structure is is great. I'm actually thrilled with it. Self-reliance, that's really the beauty of Burning Man. And if you're going to design your own structure and if you're going to go this route, think about how to inhabit this hostile, wonderful environment. Awesome. Well, it was a treat to camp next to you. Yeah. Lots of love to you and happy playa dreams. Yes. All right. Well, big love, my friend. Mm Mm-hmm. city and farewell to my bed because i'm going away wasn't that fascinating it was fabulous ty did it that way me personally i've always tent camped although definitely a second tent within a tent adds that extra layer of shelter and makes it much more enjoyable Absolutely. I mean, I have been to the point where I've had dust in my ears and in my mouth and you're chewing on it and it just, you're like, ah, but then the next day when it's beautiful and you're having a blast again, that all sort of dissipates. Mm -hmm. So part of it is embracing the dust and realizing, you know, everything you bring is going to be dusty. Some people can handle it more than others. And I've had friends say, oh, I want to go to Burning Man. And I say, you don't like the heat. You're too clean. Yeah, absolutely not. (laughs) (laughs) It's definitely an experience in setting aside personal comfort and still being able to enjoy those moments. You were a trooper. You had no issues with any of the environmental challenges. So people always say, what do you do out there for a week? And I just think there really isn't a typical day. A lot of mornings we would get up at sunrise because it's just beautiful to see the desert and the art installations at that light. Other mornings we'd spend hours in our camp talking to our neighbors 
It's really nice to get up and just have a little coffee or tea or a whole quart of water. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes you wait for your campmates to come home from the night before. Um, I'm not looking at anybody top hat. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> for various reasons, right? There's so much going on no, out there. No, it, Music and It's so art. wonderful. There's way too much to do. Probably. Absolutely. But they do produce the book, which mm-hmm. has events listed. And so theme camps are able to publish what events they're going to have. And every year we look through the book and we plan and, and we never end up going because on your way to something like Pink Mammoth, wearing pink and having a disco in the afternoon, you get sidetracked, and it's nice to be spontaneous and follow your whims. I think as adults, that's something you don't get to do. So you set up plans, you meet up, or you get totally distracted and meet up with random people. That makes it even better than having met your friends in the original place. Everything becomes the way it was supposed to on the playa. Mm-hmm. I like hearing you say that. Yeah. Well, they say that the playa provides. Mm. Just roll with it. I have a friend who's been a longtime burner, and I asked her, do you go through that book once they give it to you when you're coming through the gate? And she said, you know what? I've never gone through the book. (laughs) I always just do my day and and walk into whatever happens. So, for example, that one day when we were out on the playa and I met those musicians that lived over in Minstrel Cramp Camp, (laughs) it was really funny. Um, And they have the only piano on playa that's tuned every day. And so I went and heard some amazing Tchaikovsky piece. I love that. So fun. Yeah. And then you and I went to a magic show one day. That's right. We met at the magic show. Like, that's I'll right. be at this hut at four. And that's what's good for events, too, because you can separate and then reconnect mm-hmm. um, later, right? Yeah. Um, Things like that happen all the time. You know, you might stay out all night listening to music, and then you might domino that into an early morning art tour. And there is so much art to see. There's large-scale sculpture, there's um, guerrilla street theater, there's music, What about that circus we ran into? Turns out it was this top-notch performance, and I know circus. They pulled you up on stage, and you did a little jig. It was so fun. I think we found that camp in the daytime, and we went up to their bar, because most camps have a bar. Mm -hmm. If you show your ID, you can have a drink if you bring a cup. And this lovely woman, she's just like, oh, please come back tonight. I did a little thing at our circus. And damn, she was a wonderful contortionist dancer. Right, was, making it sound like she just did tiddlywinks yeah, or something. Yeah. <laughs> but, right, and I think that's what's so wonderful about Burning Man. People always think, oh, it's a bunch of stoners in the desert, dude. The quality of things that you see and are learning about, there were two European scientists who had a lecture on laws of space. People are so smart and so talented and so amazing in their art and willing to share. Yeah, and there's even the Artery, which publishes a pamphlet listing all the art around the playa, and you can take tours through them. And they have applications where you can even apply for some assistance for funding. Yeah, and Rara and I, we had a special connection this year regarding the art. Our former primate playground leader, Sue, is involved with this group called South Bay Burners Art Collective, and we have access to one of the volunteers. His name is Mark. Yeah, deep breath. We're going to talk to him right now. Hello, listeners. This is Deep Breath. You're listening to Peace, Love, and Soup. My name is Mark in the Real World. Tenure burner, part of an art community, the South Bay Art Collective, that's brought eight years of art to the playa. This year, we did something called Worm Watch, which is based on a famous futuristic science fiction book with a couple bad movies to back it. The visual for the piece was a 20-foot tower that you could climb to the top of, so you're looking out into the open playa beyond Burning Man for sandworms. And surrounding the tower is a large 8-foot diameter worm. And on Thursday, we burned it. We did some pyrotechnics, so it didn't just burn. It actually blew up, too. We have a whole process that we follow. I think this last year we started with 15 ideas, narrowed it down to 5, down to 2, did 1. Part of the discussion of how do we refine the ideas is there's a story. It's climbable. There's a vision of what it looks like in the day. There's a vision of what it looks like in the night, et cetera, et cetera. Those are actually criteria that we work through because there are things that ring burners bells. The actual number of people that show up on Playa to do the build is about 25. One of the reasons the individuals in the group do this, they think of this as their gift to Burning Man. For me personally, once I started showing up early building art, I really felt like I belonged. And I think part of that is just the knowledge that 
I've added to this place. It's a lot of work, and burn night starts in the afternoon of that day. Securing the perimeter, taking stuff down that shouldn't burn, and then this year we had pyro, which was a big deal, because there's a team that comes in and does it. We had a guy who came in who's a sound guy. So it's really a big, massive production. You get 1,000, 2,000 people watching our burn. You know, there's just something magical when people sit and watch a large burn like this. As the perimeter goes down, as the fire gets smaller, we had people camping out at the piece. We had a couple that came by, I think, at 2 or 3 a.m., and they were making sausages in what was left of our fire. So there's a great variety to the art that's there. Not all burns. Some goes into warehouse, some goes on tour. The kind of thing that San Francisco has done, which is when Gavin Newsom was mayor, Somehow he connected with Burning Man Arts, and they picked up on the idea that it's an awful lot easier to get art in place if it's not permanent. So the city started building art pads or art spaces. What moves in is a serious piece, but it moves somewhere else. What it does is it increases the amount of art, and it increases the variety. So there's diversity of art. And for me, this is all goodness. We need more art everywhere. Anyways. What I've been babbling on about is physical things fixed in place. There's a whole larger dimension of art, which is performance, uh, human beings presenting something. So thank you for doing podcasts. This is part of the community, part of the communication. So thank you. Thank you. Yes, we assembled our soup on Playa itself. I wish we'd thought to actually use your coals for our cooking process because they were there for quite a while. But regardless, we're delighted to have you with us here today. Thank you. Cheers, Thank Mark. you, Deep Breath. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Ah, the worm watch was such a great burn. And, Rob, Rob, the art of Burning Man isn't just at Burning Man. It traveled to the Smithsonian, is that correct? Absolutely. I mean, one of the best things about Burning Man is its influence throughout the world. But there's also an exhibit at the Renwick Museum Gallery, which is across from the White House. They have recreated a temple in there. They have mushrooms contract and bloom. Some of the projects they have in the streets throughout D.C., including these giant crows. And there's also a bear that's probably about 10 feet tall, and it's made of 170,000 pennies that create its fur. So I have a picture of me in Black Rock Desert next to this bear, and now it's been moved to downtown D.C. on K and 14th Street. Did you have a favorite piece this year? Oh, gosh. I tend to like things that you can climb on, and that's part of Burning Man. You can climb on anything. And so this year, they had a car kebab, and there were seven or eight cars with a giant steak knife stick through them, kind of, and the top was a mobile home. And if you were able to climb up the cars and get to the mobile home, there was a bar inside the mobile home. That one they did have to shut down because so many people got cut on some of these sharper edges. I did not get to climb that, and it may have been out of my ability. Ability, but I love the idea that it existed and it was a possibility. Beautiful, too. I mean, it was a pretty looking piece. We interviewed a number of different people on Playa and found out what their favorite pieces of art were and why. I'm wondering if you would share with us one particular piece of art here that really spoke to you. Oh, wow. That's such a hard question. Overall, in general, my feelings about the art this year was that it was very interactive. I think one of my favorite art pieces was the sandworm. I absolutely loved it. There was a storyline. You had to climb it. It burnt down. It kind of had a little bit of all the different pieces of Burning Man. My favorite art piece, it was like a big circle umbrella that was hanging from a crane playing uh, classical music and the leads move with the rhythm of the songs. This one like really touched my heart. I, I was grateful for being there. Another really n- amazing experience I I'd had, I came to the um, pyramid and there was this uh, meditation and I was so tripped that all 
the mechanics of the universe started to appear in front of me and giving like lots of directions to our lives, knowing that we are all together and every finger that we move, move it with an intention, no, just not live this life randomly because we are value people that are part of this machinery. It, it was a lovely experience. Honestly, it feels like my first burn again. There's a lot of art that is technology-based, and the scale of it is really grand, very next level, it's like really amazing. I mean, there was an art piece that had, I don't know, 300 or 400 light tubes all doing different patterns, and you could walk all in around them. It was stunningly beautiful. It's like a bamboo forest. Yeah. Do you have a favorite art piece? My friends made the large metal Afro pick, and that one comes to mind. And they've done a lot of art pieces um, outside of Burning Man that have to do with like black culture. My favorite art piece is probably Hexatron. It's the one that has all the LEDs and the light sticks that change around. It's very cool, very trippy. Um, actually, I've seen many cool arts. We went to the deep playa and I see the statue of a man and woman like facing each other with chrome. I think that was one of my favorite ones this year. Can I ask you, do you have a favorite piece of art? Star Star at 9 o'clock in G. And I went on my birthday and it was the most incredible thing I've seen on playa. Uh, it was an acrobatics and dance show. It had sort of a sexy cabaret element to it. It was really nice and probably my favorite. For me, one of the most beautiful things that I enjoy here is uh, one day that I went to a public shower and everyone was naked and a DJ with super nice music was playing and Alex Gray, my favorite artist, was painting there. He's a very psychedelic painter. I give him a bracelet and then we have a conversation about the toad medicine. It was super nice. And this toad medicine, could you tell our audience what it is? Of course. I work uh, in Mexico as a shaman. I work with a secretion that we extract from the poison of a toad. It's a completely natural compound. And you smoke it and you really understand that there is no lines of separation and the possibilities are infinity. You just need to trust on that. And once that people connect with that message, a lot of things get solved. One of my yeah, favorite yeah. pieces is it's probably about 10 to 15 times as large as a human being kneeling and it's wire it's wrapped with something but you can still see the exposed wire underneath and they have this huge heart cut out of the center of them and it sort of speaks to the vulnerability of people and then just that open heart. Actually I really liked the man this year. It was very high tech it's like a Roman Colosseum steps. Mm -hmm. And then below the steps, you could go underneath it. And it was this 360 degree screen and it just played abstract video art. It was incredible just to sit and watch it and then watch the people watching it. And that's the thing, the scale of some of these things are just very impressive. Yes. And one night I was out at the man and these stormtrooper like people, <laughs> maybe a dozen of them, and they were on these modern day stilts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the sort of high tech ones. Very iRobot, the theme of the year. And then they just walked up the steps and that was just so, so cool. The thing is, there's so much good art. There's so much to know. It all leads up, though, to the culmination of the big event on Saturday night, the man burn. But before we take you there, we have to educate you with the Peace, Love, and Soup, Did You Know? The Burning Man Edition. Burning Man Edition. The Burning Man Edition. Poppins, did you know Burning Man began as an intimate picnic and bonfire celebration on the summer solstice in 1986 at the North End, which is the nudie end, of San Francisco's Baker Beach. That afternoon, a family of friends, including Larry Harvey and Jerry James, built and transported the first wooden effigy, which stood a mere eight feet tall. Since then, the man has grown considerably, measuring in at around 40 feet. 
with the exception being in 2014 when it reached a record height of 105 feet. Burning Man co-founder Larry Harvey has described his inspiration for burning these effigies as a spontaneous act of radical self-expression. In 1990, in collaboration with the San Francisco Cacophony Society, the event moved to Labor Day weekend in the Black Rock Desert, located two hours northeast of Reno, Nevada. It has grown rapidly from a three-day, 80-person zone trip to an eight-day arts and cultural event with upwards of 70,000 participants making the pilgrimage from around the globe. Did you know every year since 1995, Burning Man has had a theme to inspire art and events on the playa? From 1995's Good and Evil, 2012's Fertility 2.0, to 2018's iRobot. Past themes were chosen by Larry Harvey and announced in essay form to steer the imagery and participation. Did you know Larry Harvey grew up in the Park Rose area of Portland, Oregon? He died on April 28, 2018. Fellow Burning Man originator Jerry James commissioned a three and a half foot effigy to burn inside the temple in Larry's honor. You see, a temple is burnt on the last night of the event. This tradition started in 2000 with participants inscribing personal messages on its surface and tucking in photos and keepsakes of loved ones lost. This year's temple was called Galaxia, and it was shaped by 20 timber trusses converging on a spiral opening towards one point in the sky. Did you know the popularity of Burning Man has encouraged other groups to hold similar regional events throughout the year? There is Apogea in Colorado, the Kiwi Burn in New Zealand, Firefly in New England, Africa Burn in South Africa, and here in good old Portland, Oregon, we have an event called Soak. Did you know all burners are expected to bring everything they need to survive for the duration of their time there? Food, clothing, water, and shelter. Yet this principle overlaps with another, the gift economy, where burners share what they have. This act of giving is unconditional, with no expectation of reciprocity, exchange, or special treatment. Now, a sparkle pony is a burner who is underprepared for basic survival, but still manages to pack a variety of fabulous outfits to gallop around in. They expect the community to take up the slack because they're just so fabulous. Drama inevitably follows when their expectations are not met. That said, costuming, or the choice to wear no costume at all and simply go nude, is self-expression and is a huge part of the Burning Man experience. Don't forget your sunscreen, eyewear, and dust mask or scarf. Did you know MOOP stands for Matter Out of Place? Whatever you pack in, you must pack out. Leave no trace. In fact, glitter, otherwise known as raver's herpes, is considered MOOP. Feather boas, too. Fun fact, peeing, or God forbid worse, on the playa can result in a ticket of $125 or more. Burning Man has well-tended porta-potties strategically placed throughout the city, so there's no excuse. Did you know the playa is approximately seven square miles, and because of its immense size, bicycles and art cars are needed to move its citizens around. Participants decorate their bikes to make them unique and easily recognizable during the day. And as night comes, bikes are outfitted with lights, which are especially critical and important for safety's sake. No one wants to be a dark wad. It endangers them and others. Mutant vehicles, a.k.a. art cars, have grown to include fire trucks, buses, scooters, motorcycles, golf carts, and all manner of wheeled mobile objects which serve as transport of some kind. One sees boats, pirate ships, rockets, cats, couches, lobsters, lion saucers, giant heads, you name it. Participants who wish to bring motorized mutant vehicles must submit their design in advance to the event's own DMV. Department of Mutant Vehicles for approval and for physical inspection at the time of the event. Not all designs and proposals are accepted. Did you know in 1991, tickets for the first Burning Man in Black Rock Desert were $15? Fast forward to 2018, when general tickets cost $420 plus $80 for a car pass, not including Nevada's state entertainment taxes. And speaking of money, Burning Man is a commerce-free society where the only things for sale on Playa are ice and coffee drinks at the Center Camp Cafe. Did you know Burning Man looks as if it takes place on dusty sand plains, but it's really not sand. The Playa is all that's left of an ancient lake bed. The dust is mostly clay and very fine, 
three times finer than talcum powder. And for all you science people out there, the pH of the dust ranges from 9.97 to 10.21. The alkalinity similar to milk of magnesia. <laughs> and finally, you better bundle up. Because did you know with the event at 4,000 feet above sea level, nighttime temperatures can drop as low as the 30s. More like burning man. That was just the tip of the iceberg of things that we could teach you about Burning Man. But one of the things that it is known for, and named after for that matter, is the burning of the man itself on Saturday evening. It's massive. It does have an incredible energy. Everything and everyone coming together at the same evening. All the art cars encircle the man. There's fire dancers. There's fireworks. 70,000 people, and there is a police present. The BLM officers are out there. It's organized, but really, it's a lot of self-care, self-policing, mm-hmm. and it works, and that's what allows this event to happen. Right, and having experience doing it, you have to think about where do you leave your bike? <laughs> and or if you get separated from your group, be prepared. You may not find them again if you have to run to the bathroom or spot someone you want to chat with. Everybody ends up having their own exciting burn anyways. Well, my my favorite was the story from one of our other friends who said one year she had parked her bike next to this lit up scene. And when she looked for it, she kept not finding her bicycle and she came to find out later the thing she parked it next to was an art car. Got to make sure that you're parking next to something <laughs> stationary. Exactly. Uh, yep, that is outstanding advice. Yeah, so then after the end of the show, all these art cars, they leave and they go about partying throughout the night. And you can jump on the art cars. And they have no particular destination. Mm -hmm. And that's just part of the joy of riding in the art cars. Right, or maybe they have a place that they're going, but it's not a place that you (laughs) knew that you were going. One night, I got in this car and... And we didn't see you for four days. Uh, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> Where'd you go? I've... Did you go to Reno? <laughs> <laughs> Little did I know, we actually went down near two o'clock and stopped at an event where there was a basketball court. Someone said, well, it might be a while. So I got off, took the walk over the rainbow, which was out on the oh, playa this the year. Rainbow. And here's this beautiful art car. It was basically the size of a double-decker bus. And this man steps out and says isn't she great? Maybe you'd like to come aboard. And so I actually got a tour. But rather than me telling you what this art car was about, let's hear from the makers of the bioluminescent slug. Charlie Schmidt, Ray Chapult, right now. People love the slug. They like the whimsical. Yeah, she's 30 feet, more or less. She started with just the blue, and then a few years ago, she got the shimmery glitter skin over her skin. She has big red lips and one eye. The eyeball is five feet in diameter. Her eye changes colors for different things. And eyelashes. Someday those eyelashes might wink. Yes. You know. She is a deep desert bioluminescent slug. She's not very fast, but she can carry 50 people. 10 bar stools on the lower level, and about 40 people can be upstairs. And the poofer shoots 30 feet of flame. It's a jet ignition system up there. And so when you push it, you're suddenly releasing propane gas under pressure. It's very warm. It's very loud. It is my favorite thing as a gift to give to people. Anybody that has ever pressed the button smiled. Charlie always likes to go up to people and say, have you poofed today? Yes. I said, press the button. And you say, which button? And I say, the one that says poof. So I watch the people, not the flame. There's people that break down giggling, that just feel this power. It's a rush. Even if you pushed it a thousand times, that thousand and one time, it still it catches you by surprise and makes you happy. So there's a strange process in that you have to submit a design to a committee, and they give you a letter to present. It's not a license at all. My process was quite interesting in that I had a cartoon, basically a back-of-the-napkin picture design, and we submitted it, and they said, yep. So then we had to figure out how to build it. 
it's a, an incredibly tiny pool of people that I could work with on a project like this. We learned to default to the other person's strengths. The objective was to make it simple. And that's the tricky part. Art cars take a lot of work. It's impacted my relationship. It definitely impacts it. I mean, it's... Yeah. Yeah, and that's hard. And I know I'm not alone. She was the other woman. There are actually art car support groups. We couldn't have done it without them. We go up early because we have to build to try to meet these windows to get our inspections. You department mutant vehicles. And since she shoots fire, you have to get a flame effects inspection as well. There's a hierarchy of vehicles. There's the really big vehicles that aren't even allowed into the city. They have to stay out on the playa. And there's rules about what they can do. And then there's the mid-sized vehicles, which is what we categorize in. And then there's small vehicles, and there's really small vehicles, personal vehicles. I think I were one of the oldest cars now. So not only does the slug play music, we download the art tour of all the art pieces. And they're usually like two or three minute sort of snippets. Yeah, it's a history behind it. And we'll play that and be driving around and I will circle the art piece and we'll get 100 people just riding their bikes behind us. The man burn is obviously one of the big things that everyone's at. And jockeying for position in a good spot is very important. Charlie is the best at wiggling in where nobody else is going to get. The actual burn, I've always thought, was one of the more primal things I've ever witnessed in my life. As you're up on top of the art car and you can see all the way around the circle and you've got 500 fire dancers out there and all the music sort of merges into one basic primal beat. Thum, 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 thum. And we got the little slug out there with her big happy grin and get to give to a whole dream of people. We try to be as welcoming as possible. Years later, people coming up and just saying, you made my burn. It was so cold that night, and you let me on, and you had blankets. There are people that have said, my God, you gave me my first ride on an art car six years ago, and it still means something to them. It is soul-making. We're loved. That is such a good feeling. Well, thank you both. I appreciate your time and expertise and the way you give back to the world. Thank you. Thank you. I've been traveling that long dusty road for so long I don't remember my home and sing me a song as we're riding along to take my mind off of all that is wrong I said, hey. Hello, this is Top Hat and you're listening to Peace, Love and Soup And then just when you think the event's over, it's not. It has one more night, a much more chill experience, a little quieter, and that is... The Temple Burn. And that was the night we decided to bring our ingredients out onto the playa, and we made soup, and we gifted it to people that came by. Let's just let this segment speak for itself. This is Playa Soup. So Cherry and I are sitting here in the deep playa and we are actually stationed right outside of a water exhibit that has a full little water cyclone going through the center of it and we can see the sun on the opposite side of it. It's absolutely beautiful. Uh, I should also note that Cherry here is wearing this fabulous dark blue sparkling jumpsuit with a cherry apron and I'm wearing a long silky watercolored blue smock and a top hat with a paper chef's a hat wrapped around it so now the sun is setting and everybody howls at the direction of the sun give us a moment oh! um, we were overlooking at this art installation right over here and I smelled something really wonderful and decided to come over and check out what you two were up to 
And yeah. you're making a delicious pot of soup. I wish that this recording could smell the soup, so. Well, we're happy to give you soup today. Daniel, you want to say? Um, By the way, usually we're in the Usually women have better fire. sense of smell than men. Women have a better sense, sense of smell of, than men? They remember smell by memory, like give them the same smell years later and they will recognize that. One to one hundred, like powerful than men. Wow, yeah. So let's ask the lady here. <laughs> and do you have a playa name or? My playa name is Koala. Koala? Yeah. Oh, and are you a cuddler? <laughs> yes. <laughs> you nailed that. Well, I'm so delighted that you both came over just because of the smell. I mean, that's a soup maker's dream come true, really. I'll give you an easier cup to eat out of. And now is the all-important time when you could pick up your own amount of playa dust and just sprinkle a little bit on top and mix it through. You use a salt if you like. Or, and for condiments, sides, we have sriracha sauce lemon juice, Himalayan salt, and some nutritional yeast if you need it. You know what? I almost forgot. We have actually some green tomatoes that we could put in, so let's do that now. Okay. So what do you think of the soup there, Koala? Mm. Oh my god. Wonderful. What do you smell? It smells it's very tasty. wholesome. Yeah. It smells nutritious and wholesome to me. It smells very earthy with vegetables. And, sir, do you have a playa name? I do not. This is my first year. So, my first burn, one of the main things that stood out to me more so than the art was actually the people. I met a group of people one night, and I spent the whole night with them. And I felt like they were my best friends, like, instantaneously. And I never saw them again after that. And I still, like, so cherish that memory. Like, that night was the best night of my whole week. What that brought to mind for me was having that experience, but not having to hold on to it. And the ability to really appreciate it and enjoy it in the moment. But at the same time, it doesn't have to be physically present in your life. And so this being my first burn, I was really enjoying it from the first day I got here. And it seemed like every 24 hours felt like a full week. And yet, I don't know that it's like all that. And then I met this group of people, and it's just one of those things where when you meet the type of people that you feel are your people, you have this connection, and it's like you have a lifetime of friendship in a day. And then it makes it so sad to leave. And I think what I'm grappling with right now is just trying to find ways to keep that feeling alive for everybody that I have the potential to meet in life going forward and it's that powerful thing when your soul feels like it knows somebody else well thank you again guys for dropping by and nice to talk to you and have a great temple burn thank you for having us our pleasure welcome to peace love and soup on the playa peace love and soup all right let's get our next soup visitor Hola. 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 Well, welcome you two. Hi, how are you? Well, how was your day today? Amazing. Yeah. All days in Burning Man are amazing. <laughs> and is this your first time? Yes, I'm a virgin. My name in play is Y. And why Y? Because my name is with Y, but I was drunk with a guy, <laughs> and the guy was like, uh, I, now you are Y, but with question marks. So every time that someone asks for your name, you will say, why? <laughs> oh my gosh, are you ready to try our playa soup? See, si, I want soup. Here, have a seat. How are you, man? Handsome husband, what is your name? My name is Alfredo. Please join us for some soup. Yes. And tell, and tell us what you think. Here is a little cup. Oh, thank you so much. What do you see? What this see? I see like potato. Uh, this in Spanish it's uh, cauliflower. I don't yes. know um, mushrooms in there. Oh, this is este the green. green like it's a vine. Ah, it's green beans and lots of other delicious things. Red onions and bacon bits, and in all of that is vegetable stock and water. All right, let's dish them up. Okay. Oh, you got a cup right there. We'll just hang it right over the pot and then be sure and put a little sprinkle of playa dust that you can use as a salt. Playa dust? Yeah? Just like yeah, this? Yeah. Mmm, so nice. The mushroom was amazing. 
we did an amazing. What was that soup that we did uh, with the corn? Um, did you make tortilla soup? Ah, no, we have made you tried the tortilla recipe. soup? No, we made caldo de res. Ah, caldo de res, nice, nice caldo de res. Our moms, they always have vegetable soup. You will open the fridge to your mom house and we'll be always over there. Mmm, this soup is killing me after all these parties. We have a new guest to our table. This is Aero. Hello, Aero. What brought you here tonight? Soup. <laughs> well, and you brought cauliflower. Thank you for adding that to our pot. You know, at the end of a burn and you have a cauliflower left, you should make soup out of it. Oh my gosh, my buddy. I have to come back for soup. Of course, right of course. Back. No problem. Please, welcome to our Peace, Love & Soup Playa version of Peace, Love & Soup. What is your name? My name is Poindexter. Poindexter. Yes. And who do you have with you? Well? This is Potion. Potion. Hello. Oh my god, there's a big mushroom coming up and I'm very excited to eat it. It's delicious. <laughs> I do have to say, for the podcast, I'm eating it out of a whole green beans can here. And uh, the lid is still sort of attached, which I think makes it an even better consumption experience. Playa Nutrition, like getting vegetables out here, is a delight. So I'm really excited to... Oh, and we got a spoon. We got this a spoon is to get a mushroom with. <laughs> so this is the kitchen sink special soup. Kind of, yes. Well, it's delicious. Oh, thank we you. should make it every year. So around us, they're assembling for the burn of the temples. But yeah. thanks for dropping by and yeah. have a great burn. You too. Alrighty. So Arrow, what do you think of our soup? It's actually amazing. My favorite thing is to be able to eat something that's alive at the end of a burn, like a vegetable or a fruit. And so the soup is so, so delicious, and it's done exactly like I like it, where the vegetables are a little bit crispy. And there's sexy people all around, so mm -hmm. it's spiced it up nicely. Thank you. You're welcome. I was going to ask you, you were mentioning having some really profound moments. Would you be interested in sharing one of them with us? I had one really incredibly beautiful moment um, last night. A woman was walking by herself, and we made eye contact right as she was passing, and I said, I hope you have a very blessed life. And it's making me cry, but she started sobbing. She just grabbed onto me, and she pressed her face into my neck, and she said, you have no idea how much I needed that. So, sorry I'm crying, but and those are the kinds of... Um, beautiful little connections that you have over and over and over at Burning Man. And then they become lifelong friends. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, oh, we're camping together this year. <laughs> it's like, it's so beautiful. Hello, welcome to our soup corner of the playa. What is your name and what do you think of our soup? My name is Ra Ra and it was the most delicious soup I've ever had on the playa. And why? It's it, the only soup you've <laughs> ever had on the playa. It's the atmosphere of friends. It was made with love and to put in the effort to bring it all the way out here to the temple is something and I just love um, everything about your program. Are you a devoted listener and follower? Absolutely. Mm. We look forward to this night together. Have a great, great burn. <laughs> What's your name? Quick before this temple burns. I am Thai Panda, and I am pandaing on the playa. And that includes? Uh, that includes watching this amazing temple in front of us and a crazy amount of love. Can you describe for our listeners what it is that we're here waiting for to happen? Um, right now, I'm thinking about lava in Hawaii that's slowly creeping around this magnificent candle of a temple. The ebb and flow is like one of those um, undersea phosphorescent luminescent creatures that is glowing and pulsing. And this huge explosion about to erupt through the water. And this glorious light will light the night. Now, are those the fire dancers that are collecting I around the temple? they are the fire dancers, yes. And then within the temple, can you describe what one would see? Yes, it's an incredibly powerful emotional space um, where probably everyone on this playa has left something or given something. Um, and I think we are moments away. Here we go.
what's your name? Rally. It's my third burn, and it's all about connections this year. Last year was Learning Man. This year's Connection Man. And how far did you travel to get here? I'm from Portland, Oregon. Hello, we are too. So are no we. way, really? Yes, are. Oh, yes. awesome. On the soup, what do you think? Oh, definitely a deepening connection about that soup. Um, I'm not usually a big soup person, but it smelled really good. And everyone was so kind and just kept being like, if you want some soup, let me know. And I just had to have some, and it was very delicious and tasty. And I really appreciated the sharing of that gift. Food is one of those processes of grief, of connection. Tave, can you believe she said that? No, I mean, that, that's the exact reason Brian and I started this podcast in the first place, in all actuality. And the other thing um, that I loved is just watching you watch the burn. What does the burn of the temple specifically mean to you? Um, well, for me, the temple is a place of sharing and connection of energy. And last year, uh, I felt like I didn't have anything to give to it, so I didn't feel that I could go up to the temple. But I really wanted to give back in some way. And as we know, we had a tragedy during the man burn last year. On that Sunday morning, I was in the staff commissary, and the ranger lead made the announcement that they were not going to burn the temple unless they had enough volunteers for perimeter. And that was my connection. And so I actually worked the perimeter. Instead of watching the burn, I got to watch the people. So this year, I did have connection to the temple, and I, I wanted to kind of watch it. And it was really awesome to be in, in a space where people were thanking the volunteers, thanking the rangers, and just being very respectful of, of that line, of the perimeter, and of the space. And it was just a really beautiful burn. Well, what really struck me was the silence during it. I mean, you could hear the wood crackling, and there are thousands upon thousands of people here right now. The silence of it all amongst that many bodies was spine-tingling to me. This is my sixth burn, and I love the contrast of last night to this night. Yeah, the silence speaks. Absolutely. Well, thank you again. Have a safe trip home. That was the final night, and it's always sad, but I'm just so thrilled. My favorite part about being out there used to be you didn't have cell phones, and you really were isolated from the rest of the world for a week, and now they do have Wi-Fi connection. But it does just cause you pause when you come back out into the real world. It makes you reassess a little bit of how you spend your time, what people you want to see, and what qualities and what principles in life are important to you. And, and it reminds you to be generous and happy, and I wouldn't change that experience for the world. So I think that this year's theme completely fits in with what's happening in our world as a society as a whole. As we get more and more technologically connected, we don't want to forget those personal connections. Thank you for taking us all on this tour. We could not have done this year without you. I love you. I miss you. I'm giving you a big playa hug. Go Rara. Uh, thank you. I love you too. You're the best ever. Bye Rara. Bye. In the spirit of radical self-expression, we leave you with this quote. Be yourself. Everyone else is already taken. Oscar Wilde. next time for a fun-filled episode. Till then, this is Top Hat and Cherry Poppins signing, signing off. off. I wonder what we'll dream up for next time. I don't know, but I still need to catch up on some Miss Sleep Lost in Black Rock City. Here's a little tune for you to drift off to, Poppins. Where's my saxophone kazoo? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You've been listening to Peace, Love, and Soup. The Burning Man edition. Soul-warming audio nourishment. For opening the heart and mind. With Brian Delaney. And Tave Fashe Drake. Thanks again to Poca Madre for all the music in this episode. Find them on iTunes as well as SoundCloud. For more information about today's show, along with photos, recipes, and more, visit us on our website, peaceloveandsoup.com. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. At Peace, Love, and Soup. Mm-hmm.